What is up guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to bypass Chegg's one device limit. Let's get right into it. So first things first, it's important to remember that this is not a way to get Chegg answers for free. You must be paying for a subscription or you must have access to a paid subscription through a friend or somebody else. Um, and, and the situation here is that Chegg only lets you have two devices at a time per month, I believe. I think it lets you change one of the devices out every month. So I was able to find a way that you can still access Chegg even though you don't have that device currently set uh, to, to access your account. So let's go ahead and run a little example here. So I'm, I normally run Chegg through, uh, through Google. So we're going to go ahead and go to google.com. And the very first thing that pops up is all of my Chegg things. So we're going to go ahead and click on the first one. And we are going to find Chegg.com. So first thing we notice here is that you want to register this device. Uh, we can't scroll. We can't click on anything back here. It's just this. So the, uh, the goal here is to get this to go away along with this gray background and then also be able to scroll. All right. So the way that we do that is we can right click. We can hit inspect. Now I do have this minimized here. Um, but we can see that this is what it's inspected. And if we push the delete button on our keyboard, it goes away. And now we see that this gray background is highlighted. And if we press the delete button again, it, uh, it unhighlights that. Now we still can't scroll. They took away the scroll bar, but we can read, you know, the first bit of stuff here. We can't actually click on things now. All right, so the easiest way to scroll is to hit Control P. And um, then we can actually scroll through the page in the, uh, the print document. So here we can see the question. We can see the answers here. And if you did save this to PDF, you would actually be able to zoom in and see everything a little bit better most of the time. Uh, this view is just fine for me. All right, now that is a lot of things to do every single time. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, and again, I am on Firefox and I believe that uh, Google Chrome is set up in the same way. We're going to get the Adblock plus extension for Firefox. So go ahead and Google that. I use DuckDuckGo. They should both bring you. Um, and this is the link up here. I'll probably include this link in the description of this video. But if it's not there, again, it's just Adblock Plus. And then you go ahead and add the extension. Now, I have the Remove button because I do already have the extension installed. We can see it up here. Uh, Adblock Plus. Okay, so once we have that extension, we can go ahead and continue on. So hit Hit go. Actually, I'll go ahead and remove add to Firefox, and this will pop up. Click add. Um, once you click add, go ahead and press OK. I, I allow it to run in private windows because even when I'm in private mode, I don't want ads. Um, it will ask if you want to donate. Don't get confused. You don't have to. If you would like to, go ahead and donate. I donated $10 the other day. Um, so you can go ahead and exit out of that, and it is installed. Okay. So we can exit out of this one as well, and then we can leave the Firefox add-ons. So now what we're going to do, it's a little bit sneaky. We're going to come back here, click on the Chegg, and we're going to have Adblock Plus remove all of this stuff for us automatically. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to click Adblock Plus, Block Element, and we're going to click on the element we want to remove. Okay, and this little screen pops up for us. We go ahead and click Preview, right, so we can see it out here with the changes and hit block. All right, so that goes away. Then we go back up here again, block element. We click on the gray background. Again, we have the little box that pops up. We can preview what that looks like and hit block. So again, now we still can't scroll, but it's all gonna be a lot easier because all we're gonna have to do is open it and hit control pre. Now, if you really wanted to, you could probably run a macro so that every time Chegg loads up, it automatically control P's for you. Um, I'm not going to set that up because I don't find that that's that useful. So now we can do, we can completely close out Firefox, open it up again, go to google.com. Um, the reason I use Google for searching Chegg answers is because it allows you way more characters than DuckDuckGo. So sometimes DuckDuckGo is a little bit limited and Google tends to show you Chegg, whereas DuckDuckGo tries to find you other ones. 
So again, we're just going to click on a random one here, uh, click on Chegg, and automatically with nothing else going on, we could hit Control P, Control, oh, that was Alt P, Control P. I did something wrong here. We'll just go ahead and hit print. Uh, I pushed the wrong buttons. That's my bad. Again, it, it is control P or you can just go up here and press print and you'll be able to see everything just like that. If you go to landscape mode, it might even help, right? Everything gets a little bit bigger. So that is how you can uh, see all of your, your check materials. Thank you very much for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.